Tommy Langacker in the blue gi and Jaime Canuto in the white. Two men who have made it to the podium of the World Championships in the past. Double One will make it through pool. into the semi-finals here later today, but Langacker, the Norwegian, Canuto, the Brazilian. Yeah, I'm really excited uh, to see Jaime this, this tournament looking really, really good. We saw him compete at medium heavy, I believe it pans, and uh, he's back down in middle, which is kind of his usual weight, which is crazy to me because it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he yeah, shows he's up in guy. middle. <laughs> and uh, smashes, so he'll come up on top here. He'll score an advantage, Jaime in the white gi, just a little bit ahead here, about 30 seconds in. They've never faced off before, which I find interesting. Hmm. I'm surprised by that, actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely, you know. Tommy Langacker and, uh, and Jaime Canuto, very different styles when you consider their, um, their jiu-jitsu. Yeah, and both had a, some pretty tough challenges yesterday. Jaime had Philippe uh, Cesar Silva in qualifiers too. Tommy Linker had uh, Jose Matias Macedo. Yeah, Matias Luna. Yeah, yeah, yeah Luna. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one and a half of the Luna brothers, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, jiu-jitsu-wise though, yeah, Jaime Canudo is one of those, um, one of the few modern practitioners, one of the few modern competitors who has what you would consider to be a very uh, traditional game. The GFT mm -hmm. black belt loves good old fashioned Toriander style guard passing, has an amazing close guard, has a very, very powerful straight arm lock attack from the close guard. Langaka, wow. You see him do the matrix, you see him do the key master, you see him do bolos, you see him do grab rides. Very flexible, very strong. Mm -hmm. but very different, very, very different styles of jiu-jitsu. The potential semi-final match here is really, really exciting as well between the winner of uh, Hinaldo Jr. and Tynan Dalpra Ooh, on the no other side. No easy matches in this middleweight division. Absolutely not. Like we were saying all day yesterday, some of the elimination rounds look like world finals to me. I mean, we started off with a first-round match of Mateus Sinis and Otavio Sosa in, uh, in medium heavy. It's, it's been crazy, crazy world championships. Especially with a lot of people not competing um, as much for the last two years, the rankings were really different than usual because people's points decrease in value with time. Oh, big high guard, high triangle attempt here from Tommy. Has it yeah, locked up, it full triangle. Deep. This is really deep. We could see a submission here. This is a beautiful position. Now he underhooks the leg and creates the angle needed to make that triangle tighter. He's gonna pull on the back of the head to compress everything in nice and tight. We're only two minutes into this match and already Tommy Langaka has a deep triangle here. Jaime Canudo's in trouble. This Tommy's is very using the sweep impressive. to come on top, but there's the taps. The taps. There wow. is the finish. And Tommy Langaka with a submission win in this middleweight quarterfinal match. Guaranteed to hit the podium. That's a great start for the Viking. Absolutely, and going into the match on the other side of the semis, he's uh, it's you know it's a big advantage to go in and have a two-minute fight. The winner between Hinaldo Jr. and Tina Dalbra, he's going to want all the rest he can get between now and then. Wow, big, big win over Jaime Canuto. The first time facing off, significant win with a submission in just about two minutes. A little over two minutes. And as soon as he locked up that nice triangle, a fight up. Okay. just a sniper, <laughs> yes. underhooked the leg and created the angle right away, left no time to defend. All the way from Norway, Tommy Langacker gets the submission win over Jaime Canuto and will move through into the semi-final, as you mentioned, Kendall, to take on the winner of this next match, Ronaldo Jr. versus Tynan Dalpro. Let's take a look at that. The uh, Canuto came up and got the advantage from that double guard ball. Oh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't get to see the setup, but we get to see the finish. He used the triangle to sweep it to the mount, and that's where the tap came. See, once it was the top position, the pressure was too great, and Kundo was forced to tap out. Yeah, beautiful use of underhook in that ankle to come up on top. 